I'm gonna pull over into the outside lane, I'm doing 30, quick pull in third, and I'm 50, there it is. It, you do get some, some pretty decent torque in this now. It's a pretty serious bit of car when you want it to be. Basically, I think that this particular car is such a great all-rounder because it does everything. It does literally everything you want it to, everything that you could possibly want in a car, you can get in this, to be honest. People say that the GTI is the best all-rounder, but I'm talking about us in the UK where um, the fuel prices are quite high. Um, a lot of people rely on diesel vehicles, and if, you, if you're if you into diesels, then this is definitely the car for you. Um, I'll go through a bit of a drive experience. I'll show you a bit about some of the things that I dislike and things that I like about the car. Um, but I just want to talk a bit about it, really. Uh, so I've had it nearly two years, as I say. It's It's been a great experience start to finish, I've got to say. I've had pretty much no problems with it, a few little things here and there. Uh, but the, the dynamics of the car are just like the GTI. I've driven the GTI. This is the Mark 7 GTD. Uh, this one is uh, DT UK tuned. 240 horsepower and 400 foot-pounds of torque standard. They're about 184 horsepower, um, so it does bump that up quite a bit. And the torque as well, obviously the torque being a diesel, much more than some of these uh, high-powered uh, hot hatches with the petrol engines, like the two-litre TSIs. Uh, but the Volkswagen Audi Group engine is quite a strong one, the diesel engine. So uh, it's, it's a lot of torque in a car, which you'll see in a little bit. But Overall, you've got so much kit in this car. You, you, there was a cheap lease deal on this a few years ago, and a lot of people snapped them up. Uh, but the depreciation is pretty silly, so you'd be a bit foolish to pick one of these up brand new, I would have thought. But right now, one of these, this spec, I mean, this was twenty nine 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 five, I think, the actual list price. One of these in this sort of spec now. This is a standard spec, sixteen plate car. Um, you can probably have one of these now for sort of thirteen to fourteen thousand with a couple of miles on, you know. Um, and that is a that is a good deal for what you're getting, definitely. You've got lots of standard kit on here. From the 16 model year, you had standard sat-nav, you had standard uh, keyless entry, push-button ignition, standard winter pack with the heated seats, heated mirrors, uh, and that sort of thing. So it's a pretty good bit of kit. You've got adaptive cruise standard. You've got uh, full climate control, automatic climate control and air conditioning. Uh, you've got traffic and sat-nav built in. You've got phone connectivity, just basic Bluetooth, that sort of thing. And you've got all make lights, all make wipers, uh, by Zenon uh, cornering lights, adaptive cornering lights, which do their calibration when you start it up. I've got a whole video on the lighting of this car, exterior and interior. So if you go back on my channel a little while, you'll see the video of that. And it's, it's pretty cool stuff that's on here. You've got the puddle lights in the mirrors. You've got the um, adaptive lights at the front, the cornering lights. You've got nice LEDs. You've got mood, sort of the mood lighting along this door strip here and uh, in the footwell and that sort of thing. It's all white, there's no color control or anything like that in this particular car, but it is a nice place to be. Uh, materials all around are pretty decent. Um, I, t I can tell you there's a bit of a creak in this panel here. I don't know if you can see that on camera at the moment, but just in the door panel, the door card on the driver's side, I get some rattles in there sometimes, uh, which is a bit of a quality issue. Um, it's just sort of like a plastic finish on that. But the whole top of the dash is like, a sort of faux leather wrap and it's a squidgy material it's not solid plastic the only hard plastic you'll really find is scratchy plastic down the bottom by the footwell and in the center of the center console we'll go through a few interior bits in a little while um this isn't really designed to be a full tour of the car to show you all the features and that it's literally just me talking about what it's like to own it for two years now miles per gallon uh, even tuned i probably get 30 to 35 round town um, if I'm pushing it really, really hard, but normally you get closer to 40. Um, and then motorway journeys, you can get 
50, 55 plus. So you're looking at pretty serious mileage. I mean, 20, 20 quid in fuel in the UK at the moment in diesel, probably get me about 130 miles, 140 miles, something like that. Um, if I'm just, just doing purely around town, that sort of thing, which isn't too bad considering how much power and torque you've got under your right foot there. Uh, you can do some serious pulls in this car and you know it's one of them cars where it, it may be a bit of a wolf in sheep's clothing but you put the throttle down and you can literally just point it at a gap and squeeze it and the turbos will kick in and you'll fly past most things on the road unless you look up against something serious uh the good thing is it's just a golf as well it's a pre you know you guys are probably all familiar with the golf as a car uh it, you've got plenty of space in here for everything you've got nice practical places for your drinks you've got you know good visibility it's a practical round car you've got those parking sensors it's just a practical little hatchback and people love hatchbacks and especially in the uk because they're versatile you know you've got a bit of cargo space you've got enough enough sort of a, of a short chassis to be able to throw it around in corners but also at the same time um it's big enough and practical enough to use day to day it's not like a sports car that's like low down to the ground and all that sort of thing although this does have slightly lower suspension um but overall, the, the the driving experience is really good. The steering feel is great, which I'll go into in a little bit. And uh, it, it does pretty much match the GTI. I'd say I've driven the GTI. I prefer the front-wheel drive ones to the four-wheel drive hot hatches, to be honest, which I'll speak about in a bit more detail, as I said later in the video. Um, but it's just a golf, man. It's, it's, it's a really nice place to be. It's got all the kit you'd expect it to have. And to be honest, I think they really nailed the design. If if you put this in front of someone who really doesn't know their cars, they'll say it's a Golf. But if you put this next to a normal Golf, like a, just a standard match or a whatever trim, SE trim or whatever, there's masses of difference. This looks like murdered out in comparison to that. You've got the tinted windows, you've got the upgraded wheels, which are the diamond cut finish. Um, you've got like the uh, the extras, like the lights, you've got the LED running lights, which you've got the single square on the uh, GTI and the GTD, and then you've got the dual square on the R, so you can differentiate between the models. You've got upgraded bumpers, front and rear, you've got upgraded tailpipes, bit of side skirts, everything. You can you can really tell the difference, and it is, I think they really nailed the design. The rear lights especially, I love the rear lights on this, not so much on the facelift. I really like these ones with the individual LEDs. Um, I'll throw up some pictures as I'm talking to show you some of my best shots of the car. But so I just want to show you guys what this thing's like day to day. But as an overall machine, spot on, spot on. It's, it's, you, can, you can throw it at any corner and it grips, it absolutely grips. They've, they've done wonders with this chassis and the diff and everything. Uh, the amount of power is great. The, the torque in this thing is unreal. And the gearbox paired with that, the gearbox is phenomenal in this and deals with the torque really well. Really smooth power delivery. And um, also the... The overall speed, the acceleration, there's such a thrill that you can get from this, but it still returns such a good uh, mileage. Uh, as the only the only issue you might have is if you're used to a petrol powered variant, um, then you're probably going to be a bit disappointed just with the, the power band because obviously all the torque's low range and it runs at a puff, sort of three and a half thousand RPM probably. So you, you fresh it through the gears, but you can't really take it to the red line because it'll be a waste of time. You've got to just treat it like a treat it like a high powered diesel, really, like you would any other diesel car but that doesn't take away from the driving experience whatsoever. It's, a, it's just a different power band to the petrol version, but it, it does what it says on the tin. And for, for if you pick one of these up now for sort of like nearly as low as £10,000, you know, as the prices are coming down still, now that the facelift model's out, you, you're looking at a serious bit of car for that money. You, I don't think you could get a better all-rounder. I mean, you could get cars that are faster for sure, but do they do as much mile per gallon as this does? Uh, you could probably get cars that might in your opinion look a bit better but are they as practical you know i think this ticks every single box and that is the main thing i really do think that it's such a combination of practicality performance driving experience it puts a smile on my face today like two years on and i'm so sad to see it go for my new car but we'll get into that in a bit so the interior of this car it's quite difficult to shoot from first person because i'm just using an iphone capture here but Everything is where you'd expect it to be. Everything's very nice. Everything's very well laid out. It's pretty much your standard Golf. Um, overall, you've got a good amount of gadgets in here. You know, you've got a nice cluster. You've got the infotainment in the middle that you can set to various different things. It's not quite as fancy as the new virtual cockpit that you get in these new Volkswagen Audi Group cars. But it's it's good enough for what it is if you're going to get one of these second hand. Um, unfortunately, my new car, which I'll talk about in a little while, also doesn't have the virtual cockpit, which I'll go into in a, in a later later um part of this 
but um, it's very well loaded. From the 2016 model year, you've got heated seats as standard, um, which is very good as part of the winter pack. You also get heated mirrors, which you can see over here. Um, and you also got keyless entry um, as part of the bundle. So that's a, that's a good bonus. And obviously the push button start, which is located just down here. Now that's something that didn't come on uh, models unless it was an option on previous to the 2016 model year. What you're looking at here is literally a bog standard vehicle. You've still got the ACC, you've still got all of the um, all the steering wheel controls, you've still got the full sat nav system, you've still got everything you'd expect, the heated seats, the full climate control, um, parking, electronic parking brake. As I said, I'm, li I'm literally showing you this car from a daily use point of view. I haven't cleaned it, I haven't done anything to it whatsoever. You can see the dust build up on this piano finishing here which does get a bit irritating but it's something that you do just get used to um, if you give it a wipe every now and then it's fine but i haven't done it today so the, the dust does build up but the, the good thing is it does tell you all of the faults with the car here or if you've got any problems with tire pressure loss and that sort of thing it is quite a good system and obviously you've got your full sat nav on here your media and everything like that so literally it, it's a it's a very nice place to be if you look around flat bottom steering wheel is lovely the stitching is really nice i've had no problems with the wear and tear of this wheel at all um it's it feels really great in the hands um and the the gear shifting experience is also really good it, the uh, it's filthy as you can see i just wanted to sort of show you what it does get like you know after i mean i've washed it and cleaned, hoovered out the interior about a week or two ago so this is just like a little bit of build up um, you can see that the, the gear throw is really nice in this. I don't know whether you can hear that, but it's really, really nice transmission. Um, if I was to have a manual again, I wouldn't be too disappointed with that, even though my next car is a DSG. But um, again, that's a different story. But overall, the actual feel of the, of the lever and the transmission is quite short throw. It's relatively smooth. There's not much notch to it at all and um, it's, it's just a really nice, satisfying uh, sort of click into every gear. And I've, I've been really pleased with it for the two years that I've owned this. So I'm literally just gonna go on a short drive now. Um, I've just been to get my hair cut, um, put anything in it, so it's a load of good. Um, but, oh, there you go. Uh, so I'm literally just gonna take it for a drive to the shops, uh, just an everyday drive. Um, I'm gonna go down some B roads and some national limit uh, areas uh, probably them in another shot so get some nice points then but for now it's literally just going to be town driving good thing about this is obviously you've got the auto hold so as you pull away um you've you've got nothing to do in the manual you're literally just off the clutch and as you come off the clutch the handbrake comes off um and it's it's a, it's a solid experience it's nice enough you know it's uh it's a good place to be it's a good bit of kit um, in terms of just like the safety features you get and that sort of thing um, so I mean it, we're, we're not going to be able to get some proper performance tests in this area I'm literally in like a, a little town at the moment um, but it's going to be a nice little test of what it's like just to live with day to day So for the most part, it's, a, it's just a nice civilized car. Um, there's no, no real drama when you're driving this thing unless you really want there to be. So I mean, as I say, the gearbox in this is phenomenal. It's, it's really nice, it's, it's quite a short throw, and it's really, really smooth. Uh, the only thing is because this has got so much torque, it can be a bit of a problem um, when you're trying to change gear smoothly. On the road, this thing is pretty phenomenal uh, in every aspect. It's a great all-rounder. I mean, I'm just driving down a normal town road at the moment, 30 mile an hour, smooth as anything, not much external noise coming in. Um, I've got it in sport mode at the moment, which does have the sound actuator on, which you'll be able to hear under a bit more throttle. But aside from that, it's not too much in the way of road noise. There's relatively little drama if you drive it smoothly the only thing is this one in particular i've got a dtuk box on it it's stage two box they call it which takes it roughly 240 horsepower and 400 foot pounds of torque which is pretty incredible performance especially from something this sort of size you can just chuck it around town um, it's, it's a great great combination of speed and also economy i still get probably 
35 to 40 mile per gallon around town if I'm pushing it and also around 50 to 55 mile per gallon on a run so it's a pretty good balance if I'm honest and I'm literally just driving cruising along now I'm not going to do any serious pulls because we're just going around town but um, I'm going to come off now and start heading towards a drill carriageway um, where I can at least give it a little bit of a push uh, but I mean I've got it in sport with the sound actuator on I mean cruising along at 30 mile an hour there's not much drama the the torque is absolutely immense in this you can you can really feel yourself being pushed back in your seat it's not quite the same performance you'd expect from a hot hatch because normally these things are petrol powered and you, you get a different rev range obviously the torque is all low end in this because it's a diesel uh, but that doesn't stop you from having a lot of fun in it and you, you do find yourself sort of pushing it here and there it's quite a common car now to be fair there's a lot of these on the road and the prices are coming down there's one literally passing me just now i don't know if you can see that uh, but one of the same spec literally just went past you do see them quite a lot um, when i first got this there wasn't as many of them around even though it was several years old um, so i'm on the dual carriageway now i'm going to pull over into the outside lane i'm doing 30 quick pull in third and i'm 50 there it is uh, you do get some some pretty decent talking this now it's a pretty serious bit of car when you want it to be so i'm literally just gonna take it down here and then um, tell you a bit more about what it's like day to day aside from the stuff that i went through on the interior uh, the little little niggles and faults and stuff there's really not much that i find irritating about this car the whole driving experience is spot on uh, the steering is is quite nice it's variable steering uh, electric assisted so you do get some weight to it when you're sort of going at speed and then on a on a sort of a slower turning circle you can literally move it with a, with a finger so it's, it's quite nice to have that electrical assistance and i don't feel as though it takes too much away from the feel of the car uh, in terms of the front wheel drive i think that is what keeps it a true hot hatch experience um, when i was looking for my next car i was looking to replace this um, i've only got a week left with this particular car now and i went and test drove the golf r the volkswagen and I found the steering lackluster because the, the front wheel drive is what gives this steering feel. Uh, I thought I thought that the, the four wheel drive, although impressive for off the line launches and that sort of thing, you know, I'm not I'm not really about that. I'm more about the whole driving experience and the front wheel drive with the diff and everything is is really a nicer nicer drive overall. I feel. Um, so aside from that, there's there's not much to say about about the the difference between the two. I mean. Obviously with the R, uh, there's a lot more performance involved, there's a lot more traction, but when I test drove it, I found it to feel a bit dead, you know, there's not much personality to it, there's not much character, whereas this, it's got, it's got so much feel around the corners, it's got so much grip when you're sort of taking turns in it because of that front wheel drive, and um, you're, you're looking at good performance wherever you take it, you know, you can be just cruising along, you can be taking corners pretty hard and you'll, you'll grip quite a lot. I found the grip in this when you're, when you're pushing it around a turn is a lot more than I expected from a front wheel drive. I was expecting much more understeer, um, but it, it, it does work really well. The whole system works really well in tandem with the amount of power that's in it. It balances it really well. The only thing that you will find, obviously, is that it is a bit difficult to put that power down. You're going to find that with any front-wheel drive car, especially a, a hot hatch with so much power. Um, but I'm replacing this next week with a Seat Leon Cupra 300, um, and that's going to have even more trouble putting the power down. It's a DSG car, but um, front-wheel drive, it's a lot more drama. It's a lot more fun, in my opinion, rather than just having that straight line. You know, it just Fs off like the Golf R or the Quattro Audis and that sort of thing. Um, but but this this is a uh, this is such a such a great all rounder. I, I can't say that enough. It's I'm just driving around the little town area at the moment. As you can see, I'm not going any any speed at all. Uh, I've got someone in front of me messing about and going through the gears. It's such a nice smooth change, and you can really get some talking. You know, if I take it down into second and just give it a bit of a pull up behind this car, you see that oh, traction kicked in there up to 25 mile an hour. Uh, it's just it puts such a smile on your face and it's uh, what on earth is going on here then Beep. 
Some people, man. What on earth is he doing? I wish I had a dash cam because... <laughs> I'm sorry guys about the abrupt end to the video there, but this was filmed about seven months ago now, this video that you've just seen, and a lot's changed since then. A lot of the clips that I had originally had been lost, and unfortunately I don't own the car anymore, so I can't go and refilm anything. I do know a fellow with a GTD, and he's getting on very well with it. He bought my DC UK tuning box off me. Maybe I'll go and see him soon. But until then, I want to get some more content out for you guys. There's a lot more coming. So what you've just seen is pretty much just stuff that's been thrown together with clips that I had left from all the footage that I took of the Gulf. And there's going to be a lot more stuff coming, so hopefully the uh, quality of the content improves a little bit when I'm more comfortable on camera, you know, when my production value is up a little bit. But this is just to sort of give you a preview of my new brand. So this is pretty much like day one for me, and we're just starting fresh. Just want to try out this new style and see how we get on. So for now... More to come, guys.